we will now look at how we go about choosing a border router. The slide shows the essential features needed for a border router. So this would include robust line rate routing, so layer 3 forwarding, including IPv4 and IPv6 and static routes. A strong CPU is essential and large memory is essential as well. For management, as with the core router, we require secure shell, simple network management protocol, but it's also very, very useful to have the ability to look at flow information. Every vendor has their own version, so Cisco's NetFlow, Juniper's JFlow, most switches have SFlow, and there's the IETF standard called IPFIX. It's also essential to have dynamic routing protocol support through OSPF, both OSPF v2 and OSPF v3, or ISIS. NAT is necessary as well if your campus is using private IPv4 address space internally. Hardware redundancy can be useful too, especially a dual power supply. But then we're back to the same question, would it be better buying a whole second device to give us far better redundancy options? For optional features, for example, if we're multi-homing, we do need full support for BGP. Avoid devices where the vendor claims they can do fancy net tricks to get your multi-homing. This is not industry standard, doesn't scale, and will leave a very bad experience for the end user. BGP is the only way to implement multi-homing. So we need full support for BGP if this is going to be an option in the future. And I would recommend the ability to carry the full BGP table. It's probably not ultimately essential, but it's useful to have as it will give your campus the best option for doing traffic engineering at a later date. You need support for all the BGP attributes and implementing BGP policy. If you're following this series on Network Startup Resource Center's learn.nsrc.org site, you'll find lots of videos like this one which describe how to use BGP for multi-homing and traffic engineering. For sizing a border router, you require a connection to the upstream provider. You want to allow for headroom which is far greater than the link capacity. Bandwidth upgrades will always be needed. Traffic goes faster than expected. Whatever you predict, you're going to be wrong because user demands, especially if you've been improving your campus network, the user demands will be such that you'll be doing upgrades very, very frequently. You also need to deal with denial of service attacks coming from outside. Now, you're not going to deal with those just by yourself. You're going to work with your upstream provider to deal with those but you still need to be able to handle those in the first instance. The physical chassis size is irrelevant. Don't be taken in by vendors trying to sell you bigger is better. In fact, the smaller is better because you've got reduced power and space requirements. The border router needs an internal interface to connect to the network core. It needs an external interface to connect to the upstream provider. Two, if you're going to plan to go get two providers at a later date. And you will find that usually one rack unit, uh, just over an inch and a half, is sufficient. So let's look at a low cost example first. We've included the Microtik CCR1036 as an example. It's got eight gigabit ethernet ports in copper. It's got two SFP or SFP plus ports, so supporting one gig or 10 gig, depending what's plugged in. And its real-world throughput is well in excess of a gigabit per second. Just note that BGP only runs on one core, so running a full BGP table on this might be a bit of a challenge. At the time of making this recording, Microtik had actually released a software beta which allowed BGP to run on multiple cores of this device. So in future, it might be more suited for the campus border router than it might be right now. Its v6 implementation we find is incomplete, so keep that in mind, especially if your campus has fully deployed IPv6. If we look at the high end, 
Um, again, typical examples that NSRC has been involved in with over the years include the Cisco 7301 and the 7201. In the early 2000s, so 2000 to 2010, these were probably the benchmark for a one RU Bora router in many, many networks. They're no longer supported by Cisco, but they're an excellent one RU router with three or four gigabit Ethernet interfaces, respectively. We found that the 7301 is probably good for 300 megabits per second in real world with all the features turned on. The 7201 is twice the speed. Cisco will try and promote its ISR series as equivalents, but they're considerably more expensive and don't really have the feature set that was useful and made the 7201 so useful 10 years ago. Uh, these days, we find the Cisco ASR 1000 series has become the effective replacement for the 7201. A popular choice is the ASR 1001X. Notice again, 1RU. It's got two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports and six 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. Just be aware that the 10 gig Ethernet ports are only enabled if you buy a feature license from Cisco. The default router only has the six 1 gig Ethernet ports activated. And its bigger sister is the ASR 1002X, which has six 1 gig Ethernet ports and three empty slots available for expansion. And the device can go up to 36 gigabits per second if the licenses are purchased. If we move over to the Juniper side of the fence, MX5 and MX80 10 years ago were very popular uh, routers and a lot of network infrastructure. One common chassis, which is 2RU, and the model was upgradable by license. They're still very good routers as far as throughput goes, but be aware that the control plane is very slow. We do not recommend these if BGP is going to be a requirement for you, as the control plane is so slow, it takes a substantial amount of time for these routers to actually converge the BGP session. But for throughput, still very good availability today. Notice that quite quite significant size of 2RU, reasonable amount of power also needed to run them. Juniper is, I suppose, in the process of replacing these with the MX150, which is 1RU, throughput of 40 gig, and allowing eight 10 100,000 copper ports, and two SFP, so uh, one gig ports, and two SFP plus 10 gig ports. And at the higher end, so the higher throughputs, for the biggest campuses, probably the Cisco ASR 9001 and the Juniper MX204. Both outputs well over 100 gigabits per second, supporting 10 gig Ethernet, 40 gig Ethernet, and even 100 gig Ethernet interfaces.